This video is going to be on the catabolism lab. So what is catabolism? Well, we're, break, we're basically going to break down a large molecule into two smaller ones, and this process releases energy. This defines a catabolic reaction. An example would be the hydrolysis of ATP. And hydrolysis means that we're going to have a water molecule come in and break apart an ATP. So this means um, water will break ATP. All right, so let's see this. I'm going to draw my ATP, a ribose sugar bonded to adenine, our nitrogenous base, and hooked up our three phosphate groups. So this is ATP. Your phosphate groups can carry negative charges. And since they're very close to each other, this leads to repulsion. You know, like charges uh, repel each other. So too much repulsion. This means that this molecule is not so stable. And this basically translates to, you know, has a lot of energy. Has a lot of energy. Okay. So here is my water molecule. What's going to happen is this is going to attack the bond between and the phosphate group will kind of leave, you know, take its pair and go away. So let's draw our remainder. So adenine is still attached, but now we have only two phosphate groups. And these can these still carry negative charges. But as you can see, we have, you know, not as much, not as much repulsion as before. And then here is the phosphate group that left. And this could also carry some negative charges too, OH. And also this reaction releases energy. Because, you know, it wasn't happy the way it was as ATP. So when it broke up, it relieved itself, re releasing this energy. And this energy here can go fuel other reactions. other reactions in the body. So this is an example of a catabolic reaction. We start off with a large complex, that would be your ATP, and it breaks up into two molecules. We have this uh, adenosine diphosphate and this inorganic phosphate, so two smaller molecules. And we also release energy in, as, the, uh, as, a, as another product. Okay, respiration and fermentation, what we'll talk about today, are types of catabolic reactions. So the goal of respiration is to take, you know, glucose that we ingest. And we're going to eventually, through a series of reactions, we're going to make energy. You know, uh, one form of that would be ATP. But there are other kinds Okay, uh, two types of respiration for aerobic. Uh, important thing to know is that oxygen is required. And this is how we produce many molecules of ATP per glucose. A second type, anaerobic, oxygen is not required. This process does not produce as much ATP. Okay, so the first step of both pathways is called glycolysis. Now let's take a look at that. So here is, you know, my carbohydrate source. You know, if I were to take, you know, one stick, we know this is composed of starch. And we know that starch is just a polysaccharide of glucoses put together. 
Okay, but this can't readily enter our bodies. It's too large. You know, can't readily be absorbed. We need to chop this up into tinier fragments. We have an enzyme in our body called amylase. There is a sal there's some in your saliva and your pancreas also creates this compound. But amylase can cut up glucose, sorry, cut up starch into glucose. This is glucose. You can also cut them up into a disaccharide version. This guy here is called maltose. And another possible product of this digestion is the trisaccharide version. We call this uh, maltotriose. Okay, now these pieces, you know, can be more readily absorbed than starch. More readily absorbed. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at that. Here is, you know, the lining of my intestines. We know there are cells on the border. And we have our, you know, newly cut up glucose. Now this is small enough to be able to enter, you know, pass through these cells. And now it can enter where into our cytoplasm where glycolysis occurs. So now it's in the right size, right orientation to enter. And any region on the inside, this fluid filled region, we call this the cytoplasm. And this is where glycolysis takes place. Okay. So let me write glycolysis, glycolysis. So first fact is that it occurs in the cytoplasm. And what it does is we're gonna take a molecule of glucose. So this is my you know, six carbon glucose. And this is going to become a three carbon structure. So three carbon, there's one carbon, two carbon, three carbon. This is your three carbon pyruvate. pyruvate. Uh, but notice the carbons are in balance. There's six on the left, but only three on the right. And that's because this reaction produces a second produces a second pyruvate. I'm gonna draw this in a different form. So this is also a three carbon, but if it has its proton attached, we can call this, you know, pyruvic acid. Pyruvic, we call this pyruvic acid. Okay, so our second fact is we take one glucose, and this becomes 2 pyruvate. Okay, another fact of glycolysis is that there is no oxygen required. So no oxygen is required. Oxygen required. No oxygen required. For this reaction to occur, it does require an input of two ATP, input of two ATP. However, this reaction generates a total of four ATP. So this reaction generates four. So putting these two together, you make four, but we used up two. We have a net of two ATP. So this reaction produces us, gives us only two ATP per glucose. Okay. But now 
Uh, this pyruvate can go on to the second step of fermentation, the second step of aerobic respiration, and that is the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. So let's see what we have here. So let me take my intestinal pathway. Glucose uh, can pass through. It can enter your cells through some glucose transporters. And in the cytoplasm, this glucose became a pyruvate. Glucose became, let's use green, this three carbon structure. And now this three carbon structure can enter this new organelle called the mitochondria. So now this is in the right orientation, right size to enter the mitochondria. Mitochondria. And this is where the Krebs cycle and electron transport occur. So let's take a look at this reaction. We start, we have a pyruvate. And uh, our goal is to eventually produce ATP, a lot of it. So that means on the left side, we're going to need the building blocks of ATP. And the building blocks are ADP and inorganic phosphates. And this process, unlike glycolysis, requires oxygen. So we do have oxygen on the right side. So this requires, requires oxygen. Okay, so this reaction creates us, you know, Many different sources say different numbers, but we'll say, you know, approximately 36 ATP. So notice this is a lot more than our measly 2 ATP from glycolysis. And two other products we have are carbon dioxide and we also make, we also make water. Okay, so to do a recap of glycolysis and the rest of respiration. So glycolysis, we made only two ATP and oxygen was not required. Uh, for the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, This generates us much more ATP, approximately 36 around that range, and oxygen is required. And I will see you in the next video.